Good morning. It is filled to the brim and it is Saturday, February 19th. And I want to let you know that I'm going to be taking a hiatus uh, between February 22nd and March 8th. So feel free to watch some of the filled to the brims that you missed. Keep in prayer and seeking out what the Lord has to say to you every day because we're growing in the Lord. So just want to let you know that we're talking about managing blessings. I'm going to complete it today. Managing blessings means that I need to walk humbly submitted. You know, over these last couple weeks when the Lord laid upon my heart to talk about managing blessings, it's interesting because so much of it had to do with keeping a right spirit, making sure that we're not cultivating sin, willfulness, those types of things, idolatry, substitutions for the Lord but keeping a humble, submitted spirit. And I think that's key. See, the Lord loves to bless his children. We are in union with him, and we are to remain submitted to him. These are the blessings he has given to us, and we're never to serve the blessing, but we're to serve the blesser, the one who blesses us, our Father, our Lord, our Savior. So we're to have a humble heart. That's the attitude, a heart that is humble and submitted to the Lord. You know, sometimes humility is really misunderstood. It's not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking about yourself less. It's not to be in, feeling like you're inferior, but rather to be in submission, to be respectful, to be submitted to the Lord. Psalms 25, 9 and 10 says this, He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. He leads the humble. You know what? When we're resisting him, when we're distracted, when we're not focusing in on him, you know, it's hard for him to lead us. See, the Lord's desire for us is to be fruitful. The Lord's desire for us is to walk in his power and authority. He paid for us. He gave his life for us to do that. But in order for us to do that, we have to be humble and submitted to him. Having a submitted spirit. You know, what does that mean? To be submitted is to yield yourself to the Lord. That recognizing he is the authority. That's what it means to fear the Lord. It's not fearful as in afraid, but submitted, respectful of the Lord. Jesus is our greatest example. You know, when he was going to the cross, and I've told about this episode in the life of Jesus, he says, not my will, but your will be done. There are things that we experience in life that it's not our will, but we have to say, I submit my will to you. I crucify my will so that your will is done because your will is the best for me. And Jesus being our example of how to submit himself to the Father. And you know what the beauty of that, that moment when Jesus is in Gethsemane and he submits himself and he's obedient to go to the cross. You know, scripture tells us in Philippians 2, 8 and 9, this is what happens to Jesus. And being found in appearance as man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name above all names. Therefore, as a result of his submission, what happens to Christ? He is exalted to the highest place. You know, it's interesting. When we submit ourselves, when we surrender ourselves, it's, it's a beautiful thing because the Lord blesses it. He's the, he, and he shows it forth in Jesus' life. Jesus is our example. Remember, he did everything through the power of the Holy Spirit. He laid aside his divinity and he acted out his work on the earth for the salvation of man through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he laid aside, he surrendered himself. He showed us how to live a surrendered life to the Father. And we are blessed when we do that. You know, 1 Peter 5, 6 says this, Humble yourselves, therefore under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. This is reflecting what he did, what the Lord did with Jesus, as Jesus humbled himself 
to the crucifixion on the cross. And he exalted Jesus. In the same way, we humble ourselves under God's mighty hand. He will lift us up. Why? To glorify himself. To bless, show forth his blessing upon his children. The Lord loves to glorify himself. Why? Because he's good. He's love. He knows the best. He has the best for you. That's why he blesses us. He wants us to manage those blessings, not so that they become a heavy burden, not so that we begin to, to seek those things out and follow those things, but rather so that he can glorify himself in our lives. You know, it's interesting because it's really important to watch out how we are walking out our lives with the Lord. You know, the Lord loves to prosper his children. That's part of being fruitful. But you know what? The prosperity that's in our life should never produce harm in our life. Or else, you know what that shows? Is that we are beginning to serve the prosperity or the created thing. Proverbs 10, says this, The blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil to it. In the Living Bible, it says it this way, The blessing of the Lord makes a person rich and he adds no sorrow with it. You know what's interesting? How people uh, are blessed by God. Maybe they have a business. Maybe the Lord's prospering them. But then they start to serve the blessing. You know how you know? Because there's painful toil. There is, they're starting to sacrifice their health. They're starting to sacrifice their emotions. They're starting to worry about it. They're starting to hoard it. They're starting to sacrifice their children. They're starting to become a workaholic. You know what that is? That's serving the blessing. That's serving the created thing. Because the way that the Lord blesses, He says, you keep your eyes on me. And I add no painful toil to the prosperity because you're not serving the prosperity. Let us beware of that. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep an open hand, Lord. You do with it whatever you choose because you are the one that I serve. You are my adoration. You who is the one that I am dedicated to. You know, Jesus said it this way in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. What does that mean? That means this, that you know what? When the yoke is becoming heavy on you, you left Jesus out of it. A yoke was something that oxen were walking together. There were two in, in this yoke, this wooden yoke that put the heads of the oxen to lead forth. And the fact is this, there was always one oxen that was more of the leader. The other one came alongside. Jesus is saying, listen, let me lead you. We are in this together, but don't leave me out of it or less this yoke will become very heavy. It will crush you. And the fact is this, what, whatever God has called us to do and the blessings that he has given to us to manage, we are to remain in the yoke with Jesus, letting him lead us, doing it his way according to his statutes, not going off on our own way, taking it out on our own uh, desires, but rather yielding, surrendering, moving with the Lord, not just only what he wants, but the timing that he wants to do it in. We yield to him. We surrender to him. See, the Lord has never brought blessings in our life to add sorrow. If those blessings are adding sorrow, we need to take an inventory of our attitude, our priorities, whether we have left Jesus out of the yoke, whether we've started to serve the created thing over the creator. We need to do an inventory because God's blessings in our life never add sorrow. The Lord is with us. He's our friend. He's our partner in our life. He loves to bless his children. He loves to prosper his children. That is his desire. Why? For his glory, to show forth his glory, to show forth his presence. He can't help himself. He's so good. He's so loving. But in the midst of that, we have a responsibility to manage those blessings and never to serve them. See, the Lord wants to prosper and multiply you. You know, John 15 tells us that. He wants us to be fruitful for his glory, but to never serve the fruit. We are to honor the Lord, humble ourselves before the Lord, submit to the Lord, surrender to the Lord. That's how you manage the blessings, keeping a right spirit before him. Listen, he is for you, not against you. He wants to pour out how great is the goodness of God stored up for those who fear him, who respect him, who honor him, who submit to him. 
Pray about this word. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. God bless you.